work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakriya karagani mata my SLT app ka log winna. Work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakriya karagani mata my SLT app ka log winna. Signal deep clean. Lower ankle ke thymix ke niwali nipadavaya On 1st at 9 tonight, this Tuesday, the 22nd of November, 2022. Towards a new beginning, second reading of Budget 2023 pauses in Parliament. I think it is the responsibility of the Parliament also not to speculate on domestic debt. The economic crisis that we are facing in this country is primarily due to corruption. Leveling the playing field. Kevin and Greenlight's gazetting of new bill limiting candidates spending during elections. The game changer. Ease of doing business in the country can be solved with the adoption of technology, says CBSL Governor. Digital NIC and digital KYC is the game changer. It will enable and easier for the financial services providers to provide these services in a efficient way. New legislation. All Sri Lankan exports required to comply with the new Due Diligence Act, says EDB. The new German Act limits you to the applicable for a lot of products sectors. In Union, in just two years' time, in 2024, they will probably launch their own Due Diligence Act. From Adhaderana, this is Adhaderana First at Nine with Andrew Bernard. From Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and welcome to Other Than a 24's English News. I'm Andrew Bernard. Now, in your top story for tonight, the second reading of Budget 2023 was passed in Parliament by a majority of 37 votes today. 121 parliamentarians voted in favour of the budget, while 84 voted against it. The committee stage, meanwhile, of the budget debate. 2023 will take place for a period of 13 days starting from tomorrow and the third reading is scheduled to take place on the 8th of December at 5 p.m. Artike idiriyat gaman kiri ma pili banda gatalu matvela tiyo na poli anupati ita matme badi nisa. Ye thora poli anupati adu karaka na na karan na tiye na ekakrame akta ma hi deshiya na ya pili banda va hitan na. Khamu tuwa hatiya tapi vaga ki ma tiyo na me sabha va denuat karan na deshiya na ya geva hi mas pili banda gatalu ak matve main paati na. Idi e nisa. Raja e sammandhen kriyat na kabiya yutu hi ke na ka apay khamu tuwa dadi va prakasa karan na kamadi. Visheshen ma me deshiya na ya sammandhen. अदर विविध कारण तोरो तोरो होमारु है ना ते इन द तमाई करो मंत्री तो वहाँ दस्ता मेन रीज़न व्हाई वी कैन बोरो फॉर अबाउट थ्री मंथ्स बिकॉज़ देर आर सो मेनी स्पेक्युलेशंस आ दिया पीपल स्पेक्युलेट सम नोइंगली स्पेक्युलेट सम अननोइंगली स्पेक्युलेट सो द मोमेंट यू स्पेक्युलेट पीपल विल नॉट कम एंड इन्वेस्ट इ राज्य युग का तक गिरी में क्या ना वो राय वे आवधानी यूं करते भी नो ये यात्रा लाभ लाभ ना राज्य आये तो ना तीनों ये निशाब पार्ट लाभ ना राज्य आये तो ना लाभ लाभी में तेरे ने बात की रीमेट आवश्य पीवर रखे नहीं मत माही आप उल्लिंग कल युतु आये वान नहीं ये निशाब मुना आर्थिक अभियोग I have consistently recorded my opposition to Minister of Finance being the President. When a person who is not a member of this House presents the budget or is the Minister of Finance, that seriously curtails this House's ability to be in total control of public finance as a 
constitution stipulates in article 148. This also exposes another thing this time. The economic crisis that we are facing in this country is primarily due to corruption. And that is why the IMF in its report said there are corruption susceptibilities and that is one of the challenges for the IMF implementing its program in this country. The president or the finance minister in his budget speech said that that will be dealt with corruption issue. But where? Nothing has been done. Now all of this is there and at a time like this one would have expected a program through this budget to lift this country out of the economic crisis and that is not there. So we are opposed to this budget. But for one reason we took a decision today not to cast our vote in opposition. That is due to the reason that the president has in the last couple of days repeatedly said that he is taking steps to resolve the long-standing Tamil national question. Although we are skeptical, it's not because we trust it, but we don't want to be blamed for opposing a president when he says, I want to solve this, come let's sit down and talk. The vote for the second reading of the budget 2023 began following the conclusion of the debate. Announcing the results, Speaker of Parliament Mahindi Appa Bevardhana said 121 parliamentarians in total have voted in favour of the budget, while 84 have voted against it. As a result, second reading of the appropriation bill for the fiscal year 2023 was passed in Parliament by a majority of 37 votes. And the Minister of Justice, Prison Affairs and Constitutional Reforms, Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajpaksa, said today that the Cabinet approval was granted for the proposal to gazette the campaign finance bill and submit it for parliamentary approval. The Minister added that through this bill, candidates will be required to spend the funds prescribed by the Election Commission during elections and will be punished if proved to be in violation of the such conditions. Among cabinet decisions this week, the green light was given to a proposal by President Ranil Vikramasinghe in his capacity as the Minister of Finance to advise a legal draftsman to prepare a bill based on an initial draft prepared by the Central Bank with regard to the Banking Special Provisions Act. The need for a Banking Special Provisions Act has been highlighted in the recent past by the CBSL, the IMF and the World Bank to strengthen the bank resolution framework under the crisis management framework of financial institutions regulated by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka as an urgent task. Meanwhile, the campaign finance bill prepared by the legal draftsman to provide for control over election expenditure has received the Attorney General's clearance. Accordingly, the Cabinet approved a proposal by Justice and Constitutional Reforms Minister to publish this bill in the Government Gazette and consequently submit it for parliamentary approval. Janadipati Mativarane, Parliament to Mativarane, Palat Saba Mativarane, Palat Palana Mativarane, May Hataratama Adalotamai, May Panat again. May Atate, Apexhake, could a Vedang Kalahaki, Mudal Pramane, Tindukarane, Mativaran Commission Sabav. A Mudal Pramane, Ikmola, Vedang Karlatibunot, A Karane Sanata Vimatula, Utamantri Dure, Ahimikranati, the Kadatino, Danduan Kirime. Baletino, E. Panatuleti Bene, Vidu Danol, Tanukul. Yagema Amate Mandelete, Mamidripatkara, Dusena Viro di Panate, Yano Vartamane Pavatina, Allaso Dusena Commission Saba, Panata Pilibanda, Rate Janata Tavagi, Apicata, Tibilavanda, Visasakne. Eganisa Api Alut, Allas Dusena Commission Sabava, Visesatna Kanda Mak Visin, Jana di Petinit in Sarajama and Matituma, Itipatireka, Solicitor General Tuma. Evagi Malasa, Dusano Commission Sabavi to Padaksaka General to Magi Pradana Twin, make it Umpatapi then Sakaskar Leverai. Eanua, Alaso Dusano Commission Sabava, Janata Vata Wagakiena, Parliament to Wagakiena, Ayatana Bavata Patkaranda, Pura Arganetino. Local government election can be postponed even after February 2023. At the moment that we have not taken any decision, no made a request for any kind of postponement, what we are trying to do is. To make this uh, necessary amendments or the adjustment uh, before the due date and then to go for the election. In the meantime, the cabinet gave the nod for a proposal presented by the Minister of Power and Energy, Kanjana Vijay Sekhar, for a committee appointed by the Cabinet of Ministers instead of the non existent Energy Supply Committee. The Energy Supply Committee was abolished for two years due to the imposition of the Energy Supply Temporary Provisions Act No. 2 of 2002 for two years. 
The committee was due to provide recommendations to the subject minister regarding the import, export, sale, supply and distribution of petroleum to any individual or a company. Meanwhile, the Cabinet of Ministers granted approval for the proposal furnished by the Minister of Environment to implement a national policy on the environmentally sensitive areas of Sri Lanka in order to provide the necessary guidance required for the conservation of these areas. This will also ensure the sustainable utilization of such areas by ensuring management access at all levels, along with obtaining the participation of all sectors such as the community, private sector, state sector, and experts for planning land utilization and management in those areas identifying the environmentally sensitive areas throughout the land. In addition, the Cabinet of Ministers granted approval for the combined Cabinet Memorandum furnished by the President as the Minister of Defence, the Minister of Justice, Prison Affairs and Constitutional Reforms, and the Minister of Public Security to establish a Presidential Task Force to identify, plan and implement appropriate practical measures for the prevention of the usage of dangerous and narcotic drugs. Now, the United Nations Resident Coordinator for Sri Lanka, Hannah Singer Hamdi, says the appeal for 47.5 million US dollars launched by the United Nations to support Sri Lankans received over 79 million US dollars. Speaking an event held at the UN headquarters, she said that more support will be extended to Sri Lanka to overcome this crisis. A consignment of 14.5 metric tons of maize seeds procured jointly by the Royal Thai Embassy in Colombo with the United Nations and the United Nations Development Programme in Sri Lanka to supplement requirements for the Maha season was handed over to the Minister of Environment at the UN headquarters this morning. It really gives me great pleasure to announce that four months ago when the then Prime Minister, currently President Ranil, requested international support, we launched a humanitarian appeal with the total of 47.5 million. And to our pleasant surprise, and we never thought it was going to be supported amount, but to our pleasant surprise, you, Sri Lanka, needs to know that there have been lots of friends who really rushed to contribute to supporting Sri Lanka. And at present, we have raised over $79 million for the humanitarian appeal. And this is really thanks to all the friends. And I think today is a very small, it's a small contribution, but I hope more and more would be coming as well. Country needs about 600 metric tons of maize per year to cater livestock sector, mainly to feed for poultry and dairy. Our plan was to go for 100,000 hectares of maize in this Maha season to produce about 500 metric tons. However, required amount of 1,400 metric tons of hybrid seeds was not available in the country and had to go for about 60,000 hectares with available quantity of seeds about 625 metric tons. We are grateful to the Royal Kingdom of Thailand for their generous support for providing 14.5 metric tons of hybrid seeds, which is efficient for 2,900 farmers at this crucial time. This will help to strengthen the bilateral relationship between Thailand and Sri Lanka. Now, employees of the Department of Government Printing have launched a strike demanding that the overtime payments be made on time. Trade unions say that the employees of the government printing department have had salary cuts for the past four months and, have, and that they have been not able to resolve the matter through discussions, despite repeated attempts to do so. They said that their strike action will continue until the salary cut resolved, issue is resolved. Rather. Now stay with us to find out about the new act that exporters will have to comply by when exporting to Germany after this short commercial break. Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe says that though the adoption of technology, many of the structural issues Sri Lanka is faced with right now with regard to the ease of doing business can be avoided. Speaking at the Sri Lanka Internet Day 2022, organized by the Federation of Information Technology Industry, 
The CBSL governor believes that introducing digital NICs and digital KYCs could be the game changer for the country just as it was for India. When you look at the structural weaknesses in our economy, it's something not new. I mean, if you look at the, the state-owned enterprises, for example, there are a lot of structural issues that would impede the people to, in private sector to businesses. That is where the, that we need to address all these structural issues. So, for example, there's a lot of debate going on, say, why it's difficult for people to do business in Sri Lanka. There are huge issues. If you compare with Singapore, that's why people say we go to Dubai and do business. We go to Singapore and do business. The reason why they are moving the operation is much easier to operate in those kind of uh, you know the environments where people can do business easily because they all structural issues have been addressed clearly and one way this can be addressed is the adoption of technology for example if you are to pay taxes if you are to pay customs then if you have a system where you submit your tax return online and then you get the automatically refund or final taxation without being any human intervention that's where the technology that can play a greater role. If you want to so export or import to import something or the, do the documentation, but still we talk about this digitalization, all this online, all this thing, but still in between, the major thing that we are saying is the human intervention. Is, is where the inefficiency comes in. If you have been able to import, export, uh, submit your document online and get it cleared online and then things will come out uh, easily. So this is a lot of markers. Those are the adoption of technology. I mean, one example I can tell you recently, there's a private bus operators came and met me and they have been asking for this several years, the permission from the Minister of Transport to use this transport card and use the technology to want to get in the private bus or any CTB even. And this technology is already available. We have given our support and to for them to implement. But still in our process, it has not happened yet which means that will improve the productivity of this transport industry a huge if you introduce that simple technology. This will enable the private bus operators to have proper incomes and recorded user technology, monitor all these things and address all these irregularities happening in the industry. All can be added. This is a simple technology and ability to do KYC online. A simple thing that can be a game changer. I certainly recognize the adoption of financial technology by the private sector players to the financial sector has taken a lot of time and there has been delays. The reason I think one of the issues that we have been facing is the, again the lack of application of technology for financial services. Although and there are two issues, one is the infrastructure, real-time close settlement payments, are the ability for the banks to have interbank payments, all this infrastructure and the systems are in place. But the adoption of technology, one key area that I think delays is basically what I call even earlier referred is the digital KYC is something that is basically delaying and blocking this because we have to be mindful about the other regulation coming from AML safety regulation and proper KYCs. I'm getting a lot of complaints even now. Someone to open a bank account. It's not that easy. Even in Sri Lanka, even someone from abroad. That's because we don't have a, the video KYC and use the NIC and use that data to facilitate these transactions and also and government announcement that encourage a lot more online transaction but for them to enable we need to introduce a simpler easier systems using technology. I think I know this our department for settlement department and certain initiative by Lanka Pay and a lot of initiatives but there is a way to go. I think main one to me is the digital NIC or digital identification and uh, digital KYC is the game changer. This is where India has made a lot of progress. Once you do that, then it will enable and easier for the financial services providers to provide these services in much more efficient way. I think this is where we are moving. Now, Director of Export Services at the Export Development Board, Indumini Kodikara, says that a new German Due Diligence Act will be applicable for export product sectors and that all companies, including small and medium-scale entities that export products to Germany from Sri Lanka, will be obliged to exercise human rights, environment and social accountability. She made these comments while addressing an event to create awareness on the new German law. Meanwhile, Chief of the Delegation of German Industry and Commerce to Sri Lanka, Maria Antonia von Schoenberg said that due diligence is a growing trend across the world and that the European Union will be introducing its own act by 2024. 
A panel discussion and a media briefing, jointly organized by the delegation of German industry and commerce in Sri Lanka, the Friedrich Naumann Foundation and the Export Development Board to provide awareness on the new German Act on Due Diligence that will come into effect from 1st of January 2023 was held in Colombo this morning. It is very important for us to have the knowledge on this new Due Diligence Act so that we can teach or build awareness among not only our exporter communities but other agencies. In that respect, it's very important that our staff is well educated on the subject and then they can take it to the next step to the other agencies as well as to exporters island-wide. So that's where I believe it was very important that our training was very necessary. We have very good food products that can reach out to the high-value markets if we only comply with these. Uh, and, and Sri Lanka has a head start on labor and even our environmental, the laws are in place. We just need to comply. The new German Act, you know, to be applicable for a lot of product sectors. To say it's like all about human rights, environment and social accountability. So all the enterprises, all the organizations will have to exercise this human rights and the environment obligations throughout their supply chain process. It could be a SEBI, it could be a large organization, but everybody will have to oblige to this. When you look at the diligence obligations, you have to consider this maintenance and risk analysis, the complaint management system, already large exporters must be compliant to all this, but uh, SMEs and new, new exporters when we are looking at the German Supply Chain Due Diligence Act, we see great opportunities for Sri Lanka. The act actually reflects a growing trend in the international consumer sphere. People want to buy products that are reflecting a certain international human rights standards, environmental standards, and that also benefit the local community. And therefore, we believe that Sri Lanka in South Asia has a great opportunity because it is very well placed when we look at the other countries. The most important products being apparel and agricultural processed fruits being exported to Germany are included in the Due Diligence Act. And all the exporters of these products and any other products and services to Germany will have to comply with the Due Diligence Act. It is very important that everybody get the certifications and hence this is why we really wanted to have the EDB officials being trained on the Due Diligence Act. The Due Diligence Act is obviously a German Due Diligence Act but it is a global trend. More countries are going to follow suit. Actually, the European Union is going to follow suit in just two years' time. In 2024, they will probably launch their own due diligence act. The consumers everywhere in the world are getting more and more out the kind of product and the kind of services they consume. So even though there might not be formally a due diligence act in that particular country that you're exporting to, be assured that consumers every day are going to be more cautious about the kind of product and service they're, they're consuming and really do want a certain due diligence to be performed when it comes to sourcing material for their products and services. And that concludes tonight's edition of First at Nine. Join us again tomorrow at the same time for the very latest news. Until then, visit our website www.adhadarana.lk for more news. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhadarana.lk.